Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss sample problem on shallow foundation or determining the bearing capacity of our foundation or the soil under a foundation. In this example, we are given a square footing. The square footing has a section of 2 meters by 2 meters, so it is a square footing. And the given soil parameters are the angle of friction. We're given a drained angle of friction, which is equal to 25 degrees. And a cohesion of 20 kilonewton oh sorry 20 kilonewton per square meter and the soil unit weight is given to be 16.5 kilonewton per cubic meter the factor of safety is likewise given to be 3 which is a typical factor of safety. The depth of the foundation here, DF we have 1.5 meters. And it is assumed that general shear failure occurs in the soil. So for this example, we are asked to determine the allowable gross load on the foundation. The allowable gross load, let me write, the allowable pressure is termed as a Q or small Q. And so the allowable gross load will be termed as capital Q. This should be in kilonewton or newton. So this one is the load allowable in kilonewton on our foundation. So to solve this problem, We can use the Tersagi's ultimate bearing capacity equation for the rectangular section. And the bearing capacity for a rectangular section using Tersagi's ultimate bearing capacity is equivalent to 1.3 C prime. And C plus Q or the effective stress by N sub Q plus 0.4 gamma times the width N sub gamma. So if you recall, the general formula is C times N sub C plus Q times N sub Q plus 0.5 or 1 half gamma B times N gamma. But for square section or square foundation, we can directly use this formula. Now let's look at the parameters. We have C prime that's already given. We also have gamma. Okay. Then we also have B. We don't have the effective stress yet or the overburden pressure and the bearing capacity factors N sub C, N sub Q, and N sub gamma. But 
from the book, we have a tabulated uh, data containing our varying capacity factor factors, which is a function of the angle of friction. So since our angle of friction is equivalent to 25 degrees, if you check the book by Das and Sivakugan, we can get the values of our NC, N sub C, N sub Q, and N sub gamma. Remember, we have two tables. The first one is the is for um, Tersagi's bearing capacity factors, and the other table is for the mayor hops modified bearing capacity factors. So from this table, you can get N sub C, which is equivalent to 25.13, 12.72 for the N, Q, and 8.34 for the N sub gamma. So we already have the bearing capacity factors. Now let us now solve for the effective stress which is equivalent to gamma sub df and that is equal to 16.5 multiplied by 1.5 okay let me just calculate that is equivalent to 24.75 this is in kilonewton per square meter Now, before we continue, let me just give you an idea on how angular friction and cohesion are obtained since these are right away given in the problem. But assuming we are not given these parameters, then these are obtained again from the laboratory. Like the angular friction can be determined, angular friction and cohesion, if you remember our. Uh, shear strength parameters. These are shear strength parameters and can be obtained from several tests such as direct shear, direct shear test and we also have the um, triaxial test. Okay, so let's now solve for from the formula we can get Q after we calculate the bearing capacity. So let's solve first for the ultimate bearing capacity, which is equivalent to 1.3. And sub C is 20. Oh, C rather is 20. And sub C is 25.3 plus our effective stress, which is 24 point 75 and then we have the nq or n sub q of 12.72 plus 0.4 of our unit weight which is 16.5 by the way in this problem we are not given any location of the groundwater table because if there would be um, if there is a given of the location of the water table, we have to check the three cases that we have learned. And, and so since there's no given location, it is assumed that that is way below 
our foundation at a distance larger than the width of the foundation from the bottom of the foundation. And that's why we use gamma, which is 16.5. Multiplied by B, which is 2 meters. And then we have N sub gamma, which is 8.34. So if we calculate this one, we can get an ultimate bearing capacity of 1,078.29 kilonewton per square meter. So Q sub U is again the ultimate for us to get the allowable gross we have to calculate for the allowable ultimate capacity first and that is obtained by dividing the ultimate bearing capacity by our factor of safety. Take note again that it is us to solve for the gross and so we are not going to subtract the uh, overburden pressure surrounding our df. So we're only using q sub u. You don't need to subtract q. And the factor of safety given is 3. And so the allowable bearing capacity is 359.5 kilonewton per square meter. So to get the allowable load, this is in kilonewton per square meter. We want it in kilonewton because we're asked to solve for the allowable load Q. We can simply multiply the given allowable bearing capacity or bearing pressure, which is in kilonewton per square meter, by the section, which is 2 meters by 2 meters. And so the Q capital will be equal to 1,438 kilonewton. So that is our answer. Thank you.